music video of Major Laser is full with these 3D animations where the dancers have these cool materials and simulations. Sadly, we can't recreate them all and definitely explain them. That's why we are focusing on the hairy furry dancer. Now Jordi says we can't do it practical and glue wigs to him. I'm just disappointed. So we have to do it in Cinema 4D. And in fact, we're gonna do everything in Cinema 4D today. No set, no acting, no crazy Jordi, no nothing. We are doing everything in Cinema 4D. So let's build a set in Cinema 4D. Let's do this. For our set we replicated their set of course and we chose three different looks and they're quite easy to make. We have two planes which will create the wall and the floor and then we have some discs and squares that will decorate that wall and they all have a vibrant color. Then last we place the camera and a light from one side and that's it. Is, is that... Janik! That's the guy who doesn't have a Storyblock subscription yet! Do we have to explain it again? All right, listen up. Our sponsor, Storyblocks, is an ever-growing library filled with over a million video assets. You can find very cool backgrounds on there, like if you don't want to create your own backgrounds. Or you can also find visual effects, things that you can overlay like muzzle flashes, lens flares, and so many other effects. Or maybe you forgot to shoot something, or your client is asking for impossible things, well then check out their high-quality 4K stock clips. You can find anything in the Storyblocks library and they've been putting a lot of effort into bringing a multi-diversity to their platform, which is called Restock, so there's always a stock clip that will fit your needs. And then last but not least, guys, the After Effects and Premiere Pro templates. There are so many logo reveals, side animations, video effects, and whatnot that can be found on Storyblocks. Now I hear you thinking, Jordi, it's super expensive, which is still why I don't have a Storyblock subscription yet. Well, you're wrong. There's just one single price per year, and that allows you to download unlimited video assets without additional fees, guys. So there's no reason not to get Storyblock. So go ahead and click the first link link in the description down below guys. We use it on almost a daily basis and are really enjoying it and I'm 100% sure that you will do too. So check it out guys. Link in the description down below and now let's head over to the studio. Now, while the guys are creating the first and the materials inside Cinema 4D, I'm gonna try and capture my dance movements. Now, normally that is done using a mocap suit. Now, we actually experimented a little bit in the past to capture my motion, and it worked really well. Unfortunately, that was alone, so we don't have that suit anymore. So I'm gonna try and capture my movements using a free app called Moves by Maxon. So what it's gonna try and do is create a rig in my body from the camera, and then kind of just capture my movement and we can send that then over to Cinema 4D so that Jenny and Lorenzo can load that in and stick their materials onto my rake. So let's try that. Ah! <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. Ah. So there's no way to play this capture back. So let's do a few captures I guess and then see which one works. <laughs> All right, let's bring them over to Jenny and Lorenzo and see if it actually works. <laughs> okay, it, it does kind of work, guys. It works, but it's not really great yet. <laughs> I think the idea is definitely there. I think in the future that it will work better, but right now we're seeing that the skeleton is kind of wiggling a little bit too much. So I think a second thing that we can try is to throw a video feed through an AI. Let's do that now. There we go. I'm curious. Huh? A few clicks later. Okay. It works. Almost. <laughs> yeah, it, it works. But if it works good, that's a different question. So it, it kind of struggles with the same problems that we had with moves by Maxon. Um, it it kind of captures your movements, but it struggles with details. So I think that the real king is still a mocap suit. We don't have that, so I think that we're gonna go for the third option. And that third option is Mixamo. Mixamo is a motion capture library with a ton of different moving rigs. If you have an Adobe subscription, you can simply log in and download whatever you want for free.
free. Like in our case, these dance moves. And with these dance moves ready, we can finally start with making the actual effect. We have our fun dancing animation and our 3D mannequin model, but he is a little bit too bold. So now it's time to make him nice and furry. We took our downloaded animation file and imported that into our 3D scene. We place the dancer where we want him. For us, this is right in the center of everything. Next up, we are going to prepare the model before adding hair. First, let's make a selection of everything except the bottom of his feet. This selection we are going to save. Then let's add some hair tags to certain objects. Our dancer gets a hair collider tag, same as the floor he is standing on. This tag will make the hair interact with objects, meaning it won't go through the objects. And now we add the hair. We went to the simulate menu on top and here we choose hair objects, add hair. Now under the guides tab we can add our polygon selection to the link box. And boom, your dancer is hairy. However, if you don't fine tune certain properties, you will get this really flappy hair, just like this. So first of all, decrease the length of the hair a bunch. Also, set the root of the hair to polygon area, giving your hair a better spread. Now, of course, with changing these settings, we're going to reroute our hair by simply pressing this button right here. Now, before we're going to add a whole bunch of extra hairs and probably making our project super slow, let's change a few more settings. Go to forces and here enable the options surface to hair. Then under the dynamics tab, expand the properties option and let's increase the rest mix and rest hold a little bit. These two options will make our hair more stiff and less flappy like our previous example. Exactly what we need. Okay, we already covered a bunch of important settings. Now it's time to adjust the look and feel of the hair. When creating a hair simulation, Cinema 4D automatically creates a hair material. And inside this material you have a bunch of settings which you can adjust. But the ones we like to play with are the color of course, specular, thickness, length, clump and the curl. The color is super obvious and doesn't need explanation. You can choose whatever you want, even colorized noise maps. Then for the specular, this is going to control the shininess of the hair. We decrease the strength a little bit just to make sure it feels more realistic and less plastic. Then for the thickness, again something we decreased a little bit, making the hair thinner. Now for the length tab, we didn't adjust the overall length, we made it more random. For the texture of the length we used a noise map and by doing this we are going to create a random pattern making some hairs longer and others shorter. Next up the clump setting. This we actually just enabled and didn't change any settings. Now what does it do? Well it bundles some hairs together creating clumps of hair. And the last setting is the curl option. Pretty obvious what it's going to do but for this option we decrease the curl angle and that's it. Our look is done. Last thing we now want to do is increase the amount of hairs on our dancer. But be aware, warning, warning, warning. Adding too much hair could crash your project. So save before this step. We went back to the hair object and under the hair tab we increased the hair count. Keep doing this until your dancer is completely covered. And now we're practically done. But we noticed that it's better to cache your hair simulation before rendering. This will make the rendering go a whole lot smoother and give you the possibility to stop rendering mid-animation and start again if you would like to do this. If the hair simulation wouldn't be cached, Cinema 4D would re-simulate the hairs again and again with every playback, giving you a different result every time. Oh boy, I wish I could dance like that and have such beautiful hair. But by now you're probably wondering, how did they do the other two simulations? Well, the first one is a particle dancer, which we created with our favorite particle system plugin, X Particles by Insidium. Definitely check out their plugin, which can do a lot more than just particles. And the second simulation is the Ball Man. This we created with the same principle Grayscale Gorilla explains in one of their tutorials. It's a super good tutorial and I'll leave a link for that in the description below if you want to check that out. Now what you also need to check out is this video right here about our first 3D animation ever. See how we start? started out with Cinema 4D, our struggle with it and eventually this super cool end result. And I must admit, I'm very proud of that video. But that was it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something new. Thank you Storyblocks for the support and as always, stay creative.